Hey guys, in this video I'll be going over the helmet mounted queuing system in the A10. You can turn it on over here with this switch. If you put it to battery, it will power it on using the battery inside. If you put it to on, it will power it on using the generators in the airplane. I'd recommend leaving it to on. Okay, so whenever you look around, you can see your helmet mounted queuing system. First of all, you can turn it on and off by using DMS left. DMS is this switch right here. If you hold it to the left, you can see it turns it off. And if I hold it to the left again, it turns it back on. For the other controls, we have to set it as our sensor of interest. To set it as our sensor of interest, you use the coolie switch on the throttle. The coolie switch is this one right here. You just press it down like this. When you press it down, you'll see this diamond on the HMCS. That's how you know that it's your sensor of interest. Once it's your sensor of interest, you can use the DMS switch up and down like this and you can control the brightness. And you can also use DMS right to switch through different profiles. I'll show you how to customize the profiles in a little bit. You can also hold DMS to the right to make your targeting pod look where the HMCS is looking. So if I turn on my targeting pod here, you can see if I put it on that mountain and hold DMS to the right, now my targeting pod is looking where my HMS is looking. You can see it's looking at the mountain. You can also display video from the targeting pod onto your HMCS by pressing DMS to the left. And you can see it shows up on the bottom left like this. If you press DMS to the left again, then it goes away. If your Maverick missile is selected as your sensor of interest, you can do the same thing. You can see here's my Maverick missile. I'm gonna click this button on the bottom to make it my sensor of interest. Then I'm gonna hold DMS to the right. And you can see now my Maverick missile is looking over there. Okay, let's go over the profiles now. First, you click the stat page on the bottom here, and then you click HMCS. So you can see there's three profiles, one, two, and three. You can select the one you want to customize. Then you have all these different symbols here that you can change. You can click this button to change it between off, on, and OCLD. If it's off, you won't see it. If it's on, you'll always see it. And if it's OCLD, then you'll only see it when you're looking away. When you look back um, in the center, you won't see it. You can also change the maximum range at which you see a symbol by typing in a range in miles. For example, let's do 20 miles. And then you click the range button. So now I will only see donor speeds at a maximum of 20 miles away. You can also switch it between day mode and night mode for the brightness. And you can set the TGP track mode here. You're probably wondering what does this mean? So remember how I slewed my TGP where it's looking over earlier like this? If it's in INR, then whenever I slew my TGP, it'll be in inertial mode. That means the, T the TGP will stabilize where it's looking using the INS system or the navigation system. If it's in area mode, then whenever I slew it, it will automatically try to get an area track and hold it like that. If it's in point mode, that means wherever, whenever I slew it, it will automatically try to get a point track on something. You can also scroll through the page quickly by using this button to scroll through the page in large amounts. Also, if you click the next button, you can go to the Boresight page, but right now it doesn't actually do anything. If you set the HMCS as your sensor of interest and then use your slew controller, you can move around this box. If you want to move the box back to the middle, you can use the China switch here. The China switch is this red one. If you press it back, it moves the box back to the middle. You can also place down mark points with the HMCS by pressing the TMS switch to the right. The TMS switch is this run right here. If I press it to the right like this, then it will place a mark point where I'm looking. So for example, I can look at the mountain and press TMS right and put a mark point right there. You can also move the box around and press TMS right and it will put a mark point where the box is looking. You can also get information about anything you're looking at. Let me go to active pause. For example, if I look at this symbol on the bottom left here, you can see it's giving me bearing, range, and altitude information. When I move the cross away, the information goes away. If you want the information to stay, you can hook the symbol. You do that by pressing the TMS switch up. So if I put it over the mark point and hook it, you can see there's a dotted box around. And now that information on the bottom left stays and there will be a yellow line pointing to whatever I have hooked. You can press TMS down to unhook it. If you have something switched, you can also hold the TMS switch up and it will put your SPI there. The SPI is your sensor point of interest. If you want to know more about that, you can look at my tutorial. If you unhook something, the SPI will automatically be reset to your steer point. If you don't have anything hooked and you hold TMS up, it will put the SPI on your box. If you hold TMS down, it will reset the SPI to the steer point. By the way, you may have noticed this green dotted line. This will always point to your SPI. Right now, my SPI is on my steer point, so if I look behind me, you can see my steer point one right there and you can see my speed. However, if I were to set my mark point over here as speed, when I look away, you can see that now I have this line pointing to the speed. You can also see data link symbology on here. 
Any data link symbology that shows up on your map will show up on your helmet mounted display. If you want to know more about data link, you can watch my tutorial on that. The last thing to go over with the helmet mounted sight is the symbols around it. This line you see here that goes across is the horizon line. These dotted markers here with the numbers are the angle markers. So you can see I go 5 degrees up, 10 degrees, and then negative 5 degrees, negative 10. This number on top here is the compass bearing that you are looking at. This number on the bottom is the heading that your plane is currently flying. The number on the left is your speed, and on the right is your barometric altitude, and on the bottom right is your radar altitude. That's everything to go over for the element mounted sight. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you later.